All right, hello Diesel Central. My name is Luciano and this is my 2020 Ram 2500 Laramie Mega Cab with a 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel engine. Uh, today we're gonna very quickly go over the window sticker um, for this vehicle. This was a custom ordered truck. I did not just buy this off the lot. I've already put a lot of work into some of the modifications. Um, lots more planned and there will be more videos of this truck on the channel so if you are interested definitely hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and remember to like and share the video but starting off up front we do have the laramie night edition package so you have the blacked out led bezel headlights color matched grill surround blacked out grill this vehicle does have the 360 degree camera system 20 inch wheels uh, 8 inch wide by 20 those will be coming off when i get the lift tire size is a 285 60r20 power tow mirrors bunch of options on here but we're going to go over the window sticker real quick open this up so here's a window sticker for this truck with a base price of fifty three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars Standard equipment's gonna be all right here. Optional equipment is gonna start here and transfer over onto this page. Most notably, we have the leather trim bucket seats for $545. Customer preferred package 2HH, which includes the towing technology group for $1,095. Night edition package for $2,295. The Laramie level two group for $4,095. And that includes a bunch of features. That's where a bulk of the features on this Laramie come from. The anti-spin differential rear axle for $445. The 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel engine for $9,100. Uh, this is the D-rated Cummins. This is not the high output one. I believe the only difference in that is the compression uh, and, and obviously tuning to get there, but this is not the thousand foot pounds of torque from the factory because I do have modifications on it. Power sunroof for $1,095. Instrument panel mounted auxiliary switches for $145. Clearance lamps for $95. Uh, deployable running boards for $995. Engine block heater for $95. 12 inch touchscreen. Absolutely beautiful. I would highly recommend everybody get it if they're on the fence about it for $1,295. Ram box cargo management system for $995, which I would definitely recommend getting that as well. And then the spray and bed liner for $565. And then a unfortunate $1695 destination charge for a total vehicle price of $78,300. Being a diesel, it's not applicable, or heavy duty I should say, it's not applicable to the EPA DOT fuel economy estimates. Um, before I get into all the custom work on it, I do want to point out very rarely, if ever, should you pay MSRP for a vehicle. Um, I qualified for friends and family as well as some other discounts and I did put a decent amount of money down. So I did not pay anywhere near that. Um, I think I paid in the low to mid 60s, if I remember correctly. But now that that's out of the way, we can go over the plethora of modifications. So starting off up front, uh, we are missing some components. Uh, they did fall off on the way home from the dealership. It was real unfortunate, but uh, when they fell off, I, uh, I said, you know what? I don't wanna spend all that money to replace them. So I'm just gonna go this route. And it's the single best thing you can do for these new trucks. Um, let these trucks breathe. Don't be pumping all that soot back through the engine. Um, the engine doesn't run nearly as hot with all that stuff on it. I got your turbo right there. That is stock for right now. Uh, there is a possible second gen swap in the future. Got a SNB cold air intake right here. And uh, we have a fast fuel system running to the CP 4.2. Uh, subscribe to the channel and follow along as that gets replaced with a SNS um, high performance CP3 conversion. So there's that. Um, 
nothing done yet uh, suspension wise uh, we do have these trigger industries long john kickback mud flaps now i was kind of conflicted on buying them before i had the lift kit however because i live on a dirt road i really wanted to protect the paint on this vehicle um, unfortunately fca does not <laughs> do a good job of painting uh, the vehicles and rock chips are just a very big annoyance so i did go ahead and put these on with the stock wheel and tire setup it does look a little weird right now but again when i get the lift kit and stuff wheels and tires it's going to look a lot better and i did space them out far enough to where it it is going to be still covering the wheel and tire setup when i get them and it does protect the rocker panels from rock chips I did add these Boost Auto switchback turn signals. Um, they are uh, white when the lights are on, and then when you turn your turn signal on, they go between white and orange, which is pretty cool. I like that a lot. Um, the fast lift pump is gonna be right under here. All right there. I am gonna add the uh, XL series once this is done, but that is where it is located. Um, I'm also getting a 52 gallon SNB replacement fuel tank uh, when I install the SNS uh, kit, uh, so that will greatly increase the uh, distance to empty in my range. All right, low max, low pro tonneau cover. Not really a performance mod. Uh, I do have a, a 60 inch Putco blade tailgate light bar. Uh, I have had previous uh, trucks with a light bar on them and not a single brand even comes close to comparing to this brand. Uh, Putco blade with the blade quick uh, connect harness is awesome. There is no splicing into wires, uh, reverse turn signal, hazards, everything. Putco blade, definitely the way to go. Five inch turbo back exhaust, stainless steel to a seven inch blacked out tip. Some other modifications are gonna be, I got these vinyl door sill guards right here, just to kind of protect against people kicking it with their shoes and crap when they're getting in and out and that's around all four doors. Husky floor liners throughout. Uh, I do have a matte screen protector. I originally had a tempered glass one, but the glare was just too much, so I decided to get this matte one, and it's absolutely awesome. I would highly recommend uh, everybody who has a touchscreen, whether it be the uh, eight inch or whatever, or the 12 inch, to get the matte version pretty deep window tint uh this one is five percent over factory on the rear windows and on the back and that comes out to roughly 2.7 percent of light getting through uh the tint guy put the meter on that one was 2.7 this is five over 15 which translates to roughly a 2.3 percent light transmission and then the front i've got 50 over 50. if i could do it again i probably would just go uh 20 percent uh just so that way I keep it a little bit darker but that's the tint i love it vinyl 2500 stickers just because these are black from the factory i don't know why they don't just color match them to the heavy duty uh logo like I said, I do have some more modifications planned for this truck. So if you are interested in following along, definitely subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification. Um, maybe a second gen swap. I got the SNS uh, lift or uh, fuel pump coming. I got the 52 gallon S and B tank coming. Uh, the tunes. I have a five. I have five tunes. They're on the mm3 platform i believe they range from 30 horsepower all the way up to 150 and what's cool about the uh, 
guy that I got them from, the power doesn't kick in until 50% throttle. So they wanted to do that to minimize the damage on the transmission. You Dodge guys know these 68 RFEs are absolutely trash. So uh, in order to protect the vulnerable components, they did not have a majority of the power come on until 50% throttle. And it's cool because this guy actually will tell you the throttle position and everything. We're gonna start the truck up real quick. Um, typically what I do is I let the fuel pump, oh, I gotta go get the key real quick, but I let the fuel pump prime before I start the truck. So let me go get the key real quick and we'll be right back. All right, I got the key. I'm gonna let it prime. And the fast system has the whisper quiet technology, so you don't really hear all that much of the fuel pump compared to the previous generation of fast system. Now it's primed. There we go. It does sound absolutely amazing. All right, let's get this to focus. Uh, I also installed a, uh, what is it, a RevMax transmission thermal bypass. Uh, these trucks like to have the tranny run a little hot. I don't like that. Uh, I want the coolant to obviously get cool and then cool the transmission. So I installed the bypass. And since I've installed it, I don't think I've gotten north of 135 degrees on the trans temp when before I'd be 190s, 200 on the trans temp. Um, so definitely a positive in my opinion. Right here we have your RPMs and then we have your throttle position. Oh shoot, that's really, sorry about that. Then we have your throttle position right here. Very cool. Tap the screen, then you can go to your switch. I just keep it in stock, which is plus 30, plus 60, plus 90, plus 120, and then I think plus 150. But <laughs> I think these two are definitely guaranteed um, six neutrals. If you mess around with these two without doing any trans work, uh, your transmission will go from a six speed to a six neutral speed. You will, uh, your transmission will pretty much be a goner. So I just keep it in one, uh, which is plus 30. I don't really get on it all that much. Uh, driving this truck for a while has definitely, once you drive a vehicle for a while, you kind of feel things. Um, it is really cool too when you're driving. Uh, the automatic door locks actually lock at 12.75% throttle. So if you keep it under 12% while you're driving, when you accelerate, your automatic door locks will never lock. Um, this is not the only screen you can have. Uh, where, how do I get to it? Dashboard, nope. Main menu maybe. Okay, this is one of them right here. That's one of them. This is another one. This is the, the traditional one that most people pick. There we go. Uh, if you know who tuned this, unfortunately for the fifth gens, there are no sound modifiers. On the previous fourth gen, you could get uh, high idle, which sounds like a jet. Uh, when you put this in high idle, it already sounds like a jet on cold mornings. Um, and then when I go into a store and don't want to turn the truck off, I do just put it in high idle to keep the oil pressure up and keep oil going to the turbo. Uh, what else? Uh, it had a fourth gen or a second gen, which would turn off pilot injection. Unfortunately, you can't do that with this truck. And then it had a lope tune and you can't do that with these. Um, you can change the tire size though, which is cool. I think you can also change the high and low beams being on at the same time through here. However, the one thing I'm disappointed that you can't do is you cannot change the uh, fuel tank size. I talked to my local Ram dealer and they said they can't even change it either. Um, the only way I've heard of people changing it is through the Easy Link system and an unlock cable. So this truck, uh, it, stock I believe is around 32 gallon size fuel tank. 
I'm going to a 52 gallon size fuel tank. So the needle will be correct, but the distance to empty will be not, will be completely wrong. So uh, if you guys know of any way on how to fix that without having to go easy link and unlock cable, uh, let me know in the comments section down below. All right, Diesel Central. So that is my 2020 Ram 2500 so far. Um, again, if you are interested in follow following along with the build, please consider subscribing. There is still a lot that has to go into this truck. I already have some of the components. Um, I will be doing update videos every so often. Um, if you like the videos, let us know. I can definitely post more um, modification videos. I've pretty much filmed every single modification I've done to this truck. I do have those videos. If you wanna see them, put it in the comments below. Uh, like always, thanks for watching and have a great day.